Okay. Vocal Europe is here today with Bernard Mikais, uh, ambassador of uh, Kosovo to the European Union, and to discuss the integration process of the country uh, in the European Union. Um, given all of the progress that Kosovo has made in implementing EU legislation, the next awaited uh, step is visa liberalization uh, for Kosovo people traveling to Schengen territory. In May 2016, the European Commission approved uh, its fourth and last report on Kosovo, uh, in which it was stated that only two requirements were left in order to obtain visa liberalization. And the first one was the uh, border demarcation agreement with Montenegro that was implemented and uh, ratified in March 2018. And the second requirement was the um, was the fight against corruption and organized crime that it's still underway. Um, soon after the ratification of the border uh, demarcation agreement, Kosovo's Prime Minister stated that um, Kosovo now waits for the EU to do its part, as it was promised, uh, so that Kosovo citizens can travel to the European Union as uh, other European. Um, although uh, the Commission um, is expected to give um, a positive opinion in the, next, uh, in the upcoming future about the decision, um, some, um, the process could be still uh, long since uh, the, the, the opinion of the European Parliament and the, and the Council of Ministers is needed. Taking all of these factors into consideration, uh, do you share the same optimism of the Minister of uh, the European Integration, who sees visa li liberalization uh, implemented by the end of this year? Uh, first of all, allow me to uh, thank you very much for your interest in Kosovo and in Kosovo's relationship with the European Union, and also allow me to welcome you to the uh, Embassy of the Republic of Kosovo here in Brussels. Uh, it's always a pleasure for us to, to discuss uh, current uh, issues in the relations between Kosovo and the European Union. Uh, coming to your question and coming to the visa liberalization, uh, I think we all share the same expectations uh, within our government uh, that the visa liberalization will become a reality uh, as soon as possible for our citizens. I think we base our expectations and our optimism uh, on the fact that we have fulfilled all the criteria required by the European Commission uh, in the uh, guidelines for the visa liberalization, but also all the criteria uh, mentioned in the report that you already uh, cited there. Uh, but also, I think uh, we base our expectations and our uh, optimism uh, on the expectation that European Union delivers on its promise. I think the... Um, the dialogue we had with the European Union, especially with the European Commission, always was that uh, the conditions are strict but fair, meaning that once we deliver on our side of the obligations, the European Union will deliver on theirs. For us, as you might have followed, it hasn't been easy at all to deliver on some of the conditions which a lot of people in my country consider to be unfair uh, to the Kosovar people. But nevertheless, we gathered force and gathered national consensus uh, to fill, fulfill all the criteria related to visa liberalization. And it's just natural for us to expect that now, uh, independently of uh, all other contextual elements that might happen in Europe, uh, European Union institutions here in Brussels, but also in member states, deliver on their part uh, of the promise, which is uh, visa liberalization for citizens of Kosovo. I will have to note here that Kosovo remains the only country in Europe to still require visa uh, to travel to the Schengen area. When you consider that Kosovo is one of the youngest but also sm small countries in Europe with 1.8 million uh, people, uh, which has... Uh, delivered on all the criteria, I think there's not a lot of arguments uh, to uh, be presented by anybody to continue uh, a, sin a situation like this. It's not only unfair to the citizens of Kosovo, but it, o it is also an impediment to growth, but also an impediment to further integration of Kosovo into the European family. 
And furthermore, what do you think uh, about the um, suspension mechanism that was introduced in 2017 that allows temporary suspension of the exemption of uh, visa requirements? Do you think it will be uh, a way to convince more skeptical member states to um, finally give um, visa liberalization for Kosovo citizens? Well, I think uh, the suspension mechanism is an added level of insurance uh, to all the skeptics, to all the member states, uh, which says uh, that if we follow the process, like everybody else, where visa liberalization is granted to every country that fulfills criteria, there's also a process which can withdraw this uh, mechanism if it's not respected. Uh, however, I am sure that Kosovo over the years has provided even additional arguments and mechanisms to each member states one by one, even more than any other country, not only in Western Balkans, but in Europe, to ensure them that we are a partner in the process of visa liberalization. What do I mean by saying that we are a partner? I mean that we've been working with every member state uh, to sign agreements for repatriation of uh, unbased asylum seekers. We have worked closely with administration of every member state in European Union to ensure that all the citizens, that all Kosovo citizens that are found in these member states can be returned swiftly and efficiently uh, to Kosovo in the shortest time period possible. Uh, we have done this to, to show uh, to our partners in the European Union that we are serious about fulfilling our commitments in the visa liberalization process. I think if you look at the data uh, published by Eurostat, not by, uh, by Kosovo authorities, Kosovo leads the region by the number of repatriated uh, citizens in the last years as a pro in the process of migration or unbased, uh, 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 unbased uh, asylum uh, seekers. So we, beyond the uh, suspension mechanism, continue to be in close touch with all our partners in the member states, but also in the European Union institutions, uh, to show that we are ready to do whatever possible uh, to provide extra mechanisms of insurance that the visa liberalization process and the mechanism will be respected by the citizens of Kosovo. And finally, why is li visa liberalization so important for Kosovo? To be honest, uh, visa liberalization, the very fact that we are the only country in Europe uh, which requires visas to travel uh, to uh, Schengen area is a mental barrier for our citizens, for our youth, uh, in, in perceiving their European future. It is hard to explain to a uh, youngster living in Pristina today, why is he different from his uh, peers all over Europe? Uh, th this is the one element. The second element is Kosovo is the youngest country in Europe. More than 50% of our population are under the age of 30. This is a great potential for us in Kosovo, but it's also a great asset for Europe as a whole. Uh, being isolated, it prevents the, our youth from uh, developing into a uh, grown-up, respectable, member of the European community, be it culturally, be it educationally, be it in relation to their entrepreneurship uh, wishes, or even more importantly for us as a new and uh, uh, country who, which is in development, in relation to the economic development of our country. So for all these elements, visa liberalization process is, is important. Um, even more so, uh, beyond the, the facts that I, I mentioned earlier, I think for Kosovo is being the latest in the process of European integration. Um, we have signed the Stabilization Association only in 2015, uh, which entered into force in 2016. Uh, the next deliverable in our integration uh, aspirations is the visa liberalization. If you, if you think that Kosovo has been in this process for eight years, I think it's time to get the visa liberalization off the table and focus on other uh, reforms and other uh, political integration aspirations that Kosovo has. 
And Kosovo and in general the Western Balkan regions has been implementing the EU legislation for more than a decade uh, with the ultimate goal of becoming uh, a member state. Uh, the transformation of the legislative system of, uh, and structure of a country is surely a long and really complex uh, process and the results can be seen after many years of work. So in your opinion, which are the most significant transformations that the implementation of uh, EU standards has brought to the country and also to the region? Well, I think the, the changes are, uh, are tremendous. I think the, uh, the process of European integration in the region, uh, but also in Kosovo uh, specifically, has transformed the society or has transformed every sector of social life in the country, be it the uh, democratic institutions, political institutions, be it the administration institutions or the economy as a whole. Uh, Kosovo, as I mentioned earlier, is in the process of implementing a stabilization association agreement with the uh, European Union, an agreement which makes sure that every pore of social and economic life is transformed according to European standards. So um, this has transformed the way we do business, it has transformed the way uh, our judiciary works, it has transformed the way our democracy works, it has transformed the way media uh, operate in our country, the freedoms and the rights and the access uh, they have. I think it has also transformed the way people think about society and also uh, the way they think about their, uh, the, the way they think uh, about their future. So um, the whole process of European integration has had transformative effects on the countries as once, but it has also brought uh, the prospect of long-standing uh, peace to the region. I think uh, if you talk about a region which is only 25 years ago has been uh, immersed in some of the uh, most uh, horrifying wars that Europe has seen since the Second World War, uh, a region which now uh, has found a way to cooperate uh, with each other and to look to their future, overcoming the hurdles of the past. I think this is all the merit of, uh, of the European integration uh, promise uh, and the implementation of this promise in practice. That's why it's important that we deliver on the promise on both sides, on the EU and on the side of the Western Balkan countries in order to keep this uh, process going on. And on the other hand, what are the main challenges that Kosovo is facing in implementing the EU legislation? Well, the challenges are, are, are significant. Uh, you have to consider that Kosovo has celebrated its 10th year of, an, uh, of independence uh, on the 17th of uh, February this year. So the process of European integration the process of state building and the process of development are the three processes which have been happening in parallel. When you consider that Kosovo is a country coming from, uh, from war, coming from uh, about 20 years of, uh, of very tough conditions socially and economically, uh, implementing all the pr these three processes at the same time is, is an immense challenge. It is a challenge in having the adequate public administration uh, to implement these reforms. It's a, a challenge in having adequate educational systems, judicial systems, police systems. Uh, it's a challenge for every pore of society and for governmental functioning in a country. However, uh, Kosovo has been lucky that as a whole is a European project, is a project which is a joint undertaking with our uh, uh, Western allies. And from the very beginning, um, Kosovo has, has uh, had the benefit of uh, assistance from the European Union, from the United States of America and other uh, partners which helped us overcome some of the barriers that we were facing in this process. According to the World Bank report of April 2018, uh, Kosovo has outperformed its neighbors uh, in terms of economic growth, and it is only it is one of uh, only four countries in Europe that has 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 had a steady growth since 2008, so since the economic crisis. Um, however, this growth has not um, has not proved very efficient when it comes to low lowering um, in unemployment standards uh, rates and also um, when, particularly when it comes to women and youth. 
and in um, reversing the outgoing migration trend. So, um, in your opinion, which are the economic, uh, the sector of the economy that need more foreign investments, and what are the advantages of doing business in Kosovo? Well, this is a very good question. Actually, um, Kosovo has has been growing very steadily at a norm higher than four percent in the last uh, ten years, uh, but also. Uh, if you look at the World Bank doing business report, uh, you can see that Kosovo is also making huge jumps in improving in improving its business environment uh, in relation to attracting foreign investment and in relation to making uh, the business environment more uh, more welcoming and more uh, uh, more developed. Now, as I said earlier, we start from a very low base, which means that uh, we are still in a process of catching up with a lot that we've uh, missed before. It also in the process of uh, economic development. When it comes to uh, unemployment, we've seen huge improvements in unemployment. We're talking about, uh, 10 years ago, we were talking about rates of 40 to 50% of unemployment. We today talk about rates of 25% of unemployment, uh, which is comparable to some of the countries uh, in the region we, with, which have started earlier, but have had also an industrial base which has not been damaged by war. For example, in Kosovo, uh, in 1999, we started with an industrial base of zero. The whole industrial base has been damaged by war or by misinvestment in the previous 10 years. Uh, independently of that, we have managed to have some very competitive sectors. Uh, one sector that I'm really, uh, and we as a country are proud of, is the, related to the fact that we have a lot of youth, which means that uh, technologies, service sectors, and especially IT and innovation are sectors which are growing uh, more than in any country in the region. Today, Kosovo leads the region in terms of broadband pen penetration, in terms of uh, access to internet in the households, uh, and in terms of the number of startups uh, that are founded every year. Only in the last three years, we've had about 50% of growth in service exports from Kosovo. Most of this has been in IT and in service uh, industries related to technologies. These are Kosovo youngsters which are doing work for um, whole Europe, and not only Europe, but also United States, Asia and Australia, uh, and which don't want to leave. Uh, these are people who want to stay in Kosovo, do their business in Kosovo, but serve the world. And this has been the most significant trend of people who leave, go to Germany, not illegally, but on a work visa. But after six months, they understand that they can do the same job in Pristina or in any other city in Kosovo more efficiently and more cheaply. This is also another element where visa liberalization is uh, very important because it will enable these youngsters, these entrepreneurs, to, to move freely and find new markets and new opportunities uh, in Europe. Beyond the uh, service sector, I think uh, Kosovo has uh, its traditional sectors like mines and minerals are a sector which is quite developed in Kosovo. Kosovo is the fifth largest uh, reserve of lignite in the world. Um, agriculture, food, food production, um, wood processing and some uh, automotive part industries. These are all sectors which have been growing after, after the year. But one of the sectors that uh, I'm very hopeful that will drive growth in Kosovo is related to technology and especially to IT. Uh, the European Council President Donald Tusk said, stated that in order to become a member state of the European Union, uh, the Western Balkan countries should reserve, uh, resolve all bilateral issues. This procedure is complicated uh, by the difficult uh, political relations between um, with Serbia and with Bosnia-Herzegovina. And uh, Kosovo's position is additionally uh, complicated by the fact that by now uh, five European uh, member states do not recognize its independence. Which, in your opinion, are the main challenges that prevent uh, to reach a legally binding agreement with Serbia? And which are this, uh, the challenges in the path of improving relations with Bosnia and Herzegovina? Well, I think, uh, I think again, th this, is a, this is a push factor. Uh, the, the statement of President Tusk and the whole concept of uh, future integration in the European Union 
and the resolving of bilateral dispute is a push factor for these things to be resolved. I think the first and most important element in starting the resolution of uh, all the bilateral issues in the region has to do with the fact that everybody has to accept that Kosovo is an uh, independent and sovereign country and has been such uh, for the last 10 years and intends to continue uh, being such in the future. I think from this point, the rest of the uh, issues uh, can be addressed uh, easier. Kosovo and Serbia have done great progress in the last uh, five years since the agreement in 2013 in addressing the challenges of uh, the people living both in Kosovo and Serbia. We uh, in Kosovo have a very progressive, very modern constitution which ensures the highest level of respect for human, uh, and for human rights but also for minority rights especially in relation to the Serbian minority, in order to ensure that every citizen of Kosovo feels at home living in Kosovo. Now, uh, we have entered the process of, uh, of final uh, dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia at the level of the presidents, uh, in order to find a solution that this uh, process leads to a mutual recognition of the two countries, this process leads to a uh, long-lasting peace uh, in the region and that this process leads to the European integration of both countries. Because I think one thing has been made clear, uh, neither Kosovo or Serbia will have a uh, European future without resolving their mutual uh, misunderstandings. So I think this is a huge incentive uh, for this process to go uh, forward. I can speak on, uh, on Kosovo sides. Our uh, president, our government, and all uh, political and social elites are committed to dialogue. We see dialogue as the only way of moving forward. And we remain hopeful that a sustainable and a long-lasting solution will be found very soon, which will lead to mutual recognitions between the two countries, which will lead to uh, Kosovo obtaining a seat in the United Nations, and which will lead uh, to both countries making progress on their European uh, Union paths. I think once uh, the uh, relationship between Kosovo and Serbia uh, is addressed, other issues are less problematic. Um, with Bosnia, we have relations. There, uh, there are issues with one of the uh, with one of the uh, constitutional parts of the country, but uh, there are relations, uh, there are contacts, there are uh, cooperation at the level of regional organizations and so on and so forth. And when it comes to the five non-recognizing countries uh, in, within the European Union, I think it's important to mention that none of them has bilateral disputes with Kosovo or Kosovo has no bilateral disputes with any of these countries. Um, most of these countries have internalized Kosovo Declaration of Independence and have made links between the internal situation and Kosovo, links which, which we think are not there, which we think are not comparable, situations in none of the five non-recognizers are not comparable to the context that led to Kosovo uh, Declaration of Independence or that led to uh, other processes in the region. Uh, however, we continue to patiently and uh, in a very good spirit work with each of the five non-recognizers uh, to ensure that uh, we respect the internal right uh, to make political decisions when they see the time fit. Uh, but in the meantime, that we provide all the arguments that make such a decision uh, easier. A lot of the non-recognizers, I, I might say all of the non-recognizers have been very cooperative in the process of the SAA within the European Union or very cooperative and very understanding in the process of visa liberalization. And I look forward that we continue working together to, uh, to see Kosovo move forward in its European path. And at European level, um, talking about institution, uh, the Parliament and the Commission, what do you think uh, they should do in order to address this issue of the five non-recognizing members? Well, I think the Commission and the Parliament have been playing their role uh, in, in strengthening the democratic institutions 
of uh, Kosovo. I think that's what all, that's all what we can do uh, in uh, in making sure that Kosovo is a free, democratic, and uh, a country where the rule of law uh, prevails, and then. The other decisions are up to the uh, specific countries. Uh, with the European Parliament, we have great cooperation independently of MEPs from which country they come from. Uh, same, same with, the, uh, with the Commission. I think, again, in, to my previous answer, the non-recognition has nothing to do with the relations between Kosovo and the five non-recognizers. However, we try to provide as much as possible arguments to these countries to move forward uh, on the recognition path, including by continuing to be a constructive part of dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia. And finally, what do you think the European Union should do in order to support and speed up Kosovo's European integration process? Well, I think European Union is doing a lot already. Uh, European Union should continue to uh, support the democratically elected institutions in, uh, in Kosovo. Uh, and maybe to go back to the European Union lingo, uh, should continue to be strict but fair. Meaning that once uh, we fulfill our, all our criteria and all the reforms that are required, to deliver on the uh, promises that it has made. I think it's European Union should see the should have a holistic view of uh, the processes going on in relation between Kosovo and Serbia. And what do I mean by this? I mean that if European Union delivers on the visa liberalization process, that will con create an environment and context which will be conducive to more reforms, which will be supportive to uh, progress in the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, which will be supportive to more peace and cooperation in the region. If we fail uh, to deliver on the promises that each of the sides undertakes, I think that damages the overall trust that exists in the European Union and it will damage the promise of what European Union stands for. So I think it's crucial uh, that all of us deliver on our uh, promises and obligations. Well, thank you very much for hosting us here and for giving us some of your time and sharing your insights about Kosovo integration process in Europe.